I speak to you today as a lifelong supporter and true friend of Israel. I'm a newcomer to politics, but not to backing the Jewish state. I came here to speak to you about where I stand on the future of American relations with our strategic ally, our unbreakable friendship, and our cultural brother, the only democracy in the Middle East, the state of Israel. My number one priority is to dismantle the disastrous deal with Iran. Iran has already, since the deal is in place, test-fired ballistic missiles three times. Painted on those missiles, in both Hebrew and Farsi, were the words, Israel must be wiped off the face of the earth. You can forget that. The United Nations is not a friend of democracy. It's not a friend to freedom. It's not a friend even to the United States of America, where, as you know, it has its home. And it surely is not a friend to Israel. When I'm president, believe me, I will veto any attempt by the UN to impose its will on the Jewish state. It will be vetoed 100 percent. Israel has been trying to sit down at the negotiating table without preconditions for years. You had Camp David in 2000, where Prime Minister Barak made an incredible offer, maybe even too generous. Arafat rejected it. In 2008, Prime Minister Omer made an equally generous offer. The Palestinian Authority rejected it also. Then John Kerry tried to come up with a framework, and Abbas didn't even respond, not even to the Secretary of State of the United States of America. They didn't even respond. When I become president, the days of treating Israel like a second-class citizen will end on day one. I will meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu immediately. I have known him for many years and will be able to work closely together to help bring stability and peace to Israel and to the entire region. Meanwhile, every single day, you have rampant incitement and children being taught to hate Israel and to hate the Jews. It has to stop. When you live in a society where the firefighters are the heroes, little kids want to be firefighters. When you live in a society where athletes and movie stars are the heroes, little kids want to be athletes and movie stars. In Palestinian society, the heroes are those who murder Jews. You cannot achieve peace if terrorists are treated as martyrs. Glorifying terrorists is a tremendous barrier to peace. There is no moral equivalency. Israel does not name public squares after terrorists. Israel does not pay its children to stab random Palestinians. You see, what President Obama gets wrong about deal-making is that he constantly applies pressure to our friends and rewards our enemies. But when the United States stands with Israel, the chances of peace really rise and rises exponentially. That's what will happen when Donald Trump is president of the United States. We will move the American embassy to the eternal capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. And we will send a clear signal that there is no daylight between America and our most reliable ally, the State of Israel. The Palestinians must come to the table knowing that the bond between the United States and Israel is absolutely, totally unbreakable. They must come to the table willing and able to stop the terror being committed on a daily basis against Israel. They must do that. And they must come to the table willing to accept that Israel is a Jewish state and it will forever exist as a Jewish state.